Today's high watt soundbite is all about distortion and why it's my favorite tool. Well, no question, one of my favorite engineering and production techniques in the studio is applying distortion to my tracks and to my mixes. Right from the very beginning of my career, I have gravitated to distortion in a really big way. And I'm sure I know why. You know, the human ear doesn't really want to hear a sound that's too clean. We actually yearn for distortion and particularly good sounding harmonic distortion. So when we present our ear with something that is almost too clean and too perfect, there's a psychoacoustic connection with our brain where we just sort of hear that sound as being weird, sort of out of place. And as soon as we start to introduce some harmonic distortion to that sound, just almost immediately our ear warms up to the idea. It's more attracted to that kind of sound. So this is just a belief that I've had from day one is that, you know, distortion is your friend in a really, really big way. So for today's session, I put together a mix of a sample of some of my favorite remixes that I've ever gotten up to over the years. And this is going to be a primo example of just how huge a role distortion plays into my productions. Sort of unreal. So this sampling is a little under three minutes. I'll play the whole thing out. It's five different remixes mixed together. And when we're finished playing that back, we'll come back and we'll look at each one of these tracks and kind of break it down a little bit and talk about how I went about applying that distortion to these tracks. Just unbelievable the sheer amount of distortion in these mixes. Check it. What a blast from the past and listening back to those mixes brings back some really great memories. Before we get started, I want to share something very, very important and I think something that is often overlooked. You'll notice as I was playing those mixes back that I was crediting additional programming by. 
This is such an important credit and one that is so often overlooked. In just about every remix that I've worked on my entire career, I've collaborated with another artist doing that remix. And this is often something that gets overlooked. Like classic examples, Skinny Puppy Rodent, the DDT mix, the Ken Highwatt Marshall mix, right? That's great for me, but what about Rom DePrisco? What about the guy that programmed so many of those cool sounds that I was able to create this monster remix with. Particularly as I get older in my career, this is just something that has become really important to me is making sure that proper credit is given where credit is due. I mean, these are such important remixes to my career. And in every case, I was working with someone on them. So it wasn't just me coming to the plate. You know what I mean? I had somebody I was collaborating with. And it's so, so important to recognize each one of those collaborators in a big way. Rom DePrisco is one talented artist, unbelievable. And what a privilege it was to have Rom work with me on this mix, Rodent. So let's break each one of these down a little bit. You know, Rodent, the first mix I played, it's an extreme example of kind of over the top distortion. But honestly, I've heard this mix over many different PA systems and in different clubs, and it just cuts through like no one's business. And I'm absolutely convinced a large degree of that is the content of distortion that's in that track. Okay, so what did I use to generate all that distortion? I've got Ogre going through that kind of classic skinny puppy vocal chain, right? And I've talked about it in detail in another session that I posted called Vocal Production Session Number Three Skinny Puppy. I'll link that one at the end of this, but oh man, there's two pieces of gear at Mushroom that we used to use on Ogre's voice to create wicked distortion sounds. And that combination is a Furman PQ3. It's a parametric equalizer that was just dangerous, that thing. You could blow speakers with that EQ in a heartbeat. It would just be like a dangerous EQ. But we would put that EQ right before a Universal Audio 176 limiting amplifier. And on that limiting amplifier, I would turn the attack switch all the way down until it clicked, which meant that the compressor the circuit of the compressor was bypassed, and now you were just using the input and output stage of that limiting amplifier. Well, I, then I would just take the input and pin it full blast, turn the output way down, and just fry the tube inside that compressor. That limiting amplifier would just get so hot, but the sound that came out of it was just pristine. It's just a wild sound that I've never been able to actually recreate without those pieces of gear. On top of that, the entire mix feels like it's just about to explode. And I remember exactly how he created that kind of crush factor. Talking about an Apogee analog to digital converter. I forget the model number of this thing, but it was a little half rack unit and it had a soft limiter whole bunch of controls on the front of that thing that you could really manipulate and start messing with sounds. I think we actually processed the kick drum separately. I remember driving that kick drum so hard into the front end of that Apogee. It was just lit up red, but the output sounded so good. So I remember processing the main kick and then putting the entire mix into it to give it that crush factor. And similarly in this next example with Deftones My Own Summer, this is a remix that I did with my humble brother, Traz Damji. We were commissioned to do this mix for the video game Street Skater. And, oh man, when I heard the original track, the way it was produced and the way it was mixed, I was just floored. The original version, My Own Summer, Shove It by the Deftones, is a killer track. And as a remixer, I put that track up and I'm just like... Oh man, what are you going to do with this thing? This is one of the dangers of mixing songs that are really, really good is kind of screwing them up, right? I don't want to do that. So with all due respect to the Deftones, we sort of stepped it up a notch and distortion became my friend on this mix. Check this. <laughs> What an extreme amount of distortion going on in that chorus, but how effective is that? I mean, we're talking about the deaf tones. Yeah, I remember playing this mix back to Steph for the first time. He came over to visit us while we were working on a Fear Factory record, and I sat him down and played him this thing on the big speakers really loud. To see Steph's reaction was just priceless. 
something I'll never forget. So awesome. And I used the very same combination to create that extreme distortion in this Deftones track. When I got the master, I took the original unprocessed vocal files over to Mushroom Studios and I ran them through the classic Ogre vocal effect, that Furman PQ3 and the Universal Audio 176. Just sort of unbeatable and something that I've never been able to recreate. You know, here I am referring to a couple of pieces of gear that I don't even have access to anymore and it would just about be impossible to try and find them now. You know, the beautiful thing about today is we have so many resources available to us to create distortion through plugins, so many different plugins, and some of them really, really effective. So no question, next week, I'm gonna continue this discussion of distortion. We're gonna get into a more in-depth discussion on how to apply distortion to your tracks using some modern tools and some not so modern tools. And this remix, Crap Louse for Lords of Acid, well, I did that with Luke Van Acker at Mushroom Studios really late one night. We had just finished working on one of Luke's projects, doing a big mix, and he literally, he hadn't mentioned a single thing. He looks at me and he goes, do you wanna do a remix? And I'm like, what, now? And he's like, yeah, man, Lords of Acid want me to do this mix. And it's like, sort of have this window and it's like right now. So it's like, let's get, let's get busy. So Luke and I definitely didn't have time to do any additional programming to this track. I remember throwing this multi-track up and just about throwing a gate on just about every track and triggering other things and, and the whole while applying a ton of distortion. And I absolutely believe that's what makes this mix work so well. Yeah, in my experience, there's certain remixes that really don't loan themselves to additional programming and sort of rebuilding the whole track. Sometimes just doing a super down and dirty, quick alternate mix on a track is exactly what the doctor ordered. And I think it came across really well in this Lords of Acid track, for sure. There are just so many different ways in the studio today to generate distortion. Plugins are just one aspect of how you can create distortion. Every single piece of outboard gear you have, it will have a unique sound when you hit that input too hard. Some of them will be really sweet sounding, some of them will be really ugly sounding, but I just encourage you to start experimenting. Well, I hope this session inspires you to apply more distortion to your mixes. And I can't wait for next week's session when we take a further and more in-depth look at how to effectively apply distortion to your very own tracks. Thank you for sitting in.